Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In Range. Today we have the POF DI 308 Revolution here at the Two Gun Action Challenge Match to put it through the test on the clock. Because while this looks like a traditional standard AR thingy, it legitimately is not. When you dig in under the hood, this rifle differentiates itself on the market in many different ways. When Eugene Stoner originally designed the AR-10, he used modern materials and design principles to bring a 308 carbine to the market that was extremely low weight and handy and easy to deal with. And this is the spiritual descendant of that. This gun, while chambered in 308, comes in at under seven pounds. And what is even more interesting about it is it is dimensionally the equivalent of a 5.56 rifle in almost every way with a few exceptions. Obviously a 308 magwell, 308 bolt, and 308 barrel. However, the rest of the gun is 5.56 in its dimensions, including the bolt carrier group and everything else about it, which is part of the reason it's coming in at that under seven pounds, but it's still firing 308 NATO, or excuse me, 762 by 51. So in that regard, this really is what Eugene Stoner intended to do, but brought to the modern world in 2019 with modern manufacturing and materials. There are a lot of other little things that differentiate this gun. It has an oversized barrel nut for heat sink and heat dissipation, and the chamber is partially fluted to aid in high pressure extraction and ejection. These should all lend themselves to a very reliable rifle. But the question that comes to mind is, is a sub seven pound 308 rifle still handy on the clock? And that's what I intend to find out today at the Two Gun Action Challenge match. So let's go see what happens. <laughs> All right, so that went really well. In terms of actually doing the stage a little faster, if I had the bipod set longer so it didn't have to rest on the magazine, I was a little worried about the gun falling over and what that happened. That took me a little extra time and that cost me some seconds. When it came to the actual shooting portion of the stage, which was getting accurate hits at 200 yards offhand with a sub seven pound 308 semi-automatic AR, that was not a problem at all. The trigger is excellent. The, uh, obviously I'm using a red dot, so I can't say much about the sights. The balance is excellent. The recoil perception is excellent. Obviously it's a 308, but it's, in terms of the recoil of this and 308 versus many other rifles, this is, I'm going to say this, this is the nicest recoiling 308 I've ever fired. And that's exceptional being that it's a sub 7 pound rifle. The muzzle brakes are a little spicy, but not bad. I've dealt with worse. So in terms of the gun's handling at offhand marksmanship at 200 yards, the POF 308 GI Revolution was great. Let's move on to the next stage. So this was essentially the CQB stage, a lot of close range paper at a high rate of fire and um, this handled extremely well. I had one of the best times on the stage and I had a completely clean run. What I will say is while this does is still a 308, if you've ever fired a 5.56 gun that kind of recoils a little hard, maybe a really lightweight, you know, 10 inch or something like that, this being a standard length 308, this feels a lot like just a hard recoiling 5.56. Um, the only thing I would say is the brake 
actually is a little bit more intrusive to me than the recoil, even though it's I'm shooting under you know 50 grain bullets. In that, I'm just not used to using brakes, and I'm not big into brakes. But that said, this brake is not as bad as others. And in regards to this stage, the idea of a sub seven pound 308 being able to keep up with a 556 gun, this absolutely proved that in this CQB stage. Shooter begins at this start box. Rifle unloaded and held at port arms. Pistol loaded and holstered. At buzzer, shooter will engage the large steel target downrange, the knockdown target, from standing offhand only. They will either acquire 10 hits or until the target falls. It could fall. If it falls, you're good to go. If the target has fallen, the shooter will then go to the target, reset it back onto the stand, run up range, reacquire their rifle, and either hit it with 10 more hits or knock it down again. Stand by. So on this stage, there was an ability to have a little bit of an advantage if you had a high-powered cartridge, and that was, of course, with 308. So you had a full power, full weight uh, knockdown target about at 50 yards. You got to either get 10 hits or the target had to fall over, and you had to do that twice. And there were people that hammered it with 5.56, and it didn't go over. Um, there was one guy, actually Sinister Rifleman, who hammered it with 5.56 really high up near the head, and it did go over. With this, I don't even know how many rounds it took to go over, but it went over so fast that I was firing as it was falling. So. There's another advantage there to 308 in terms of power, of course, no doubt about that. The rest of the stage was pistol, which I'm not going to include in this because it really doesn't have any relevancy to what I'm doing, which is reviewing this. But the ability to hammer that target at 50 yards as fast as I can pull the trigger, the uh, the balance and recoil capabilities, or lack of recoil in this gun, made it very possible to just hammer that target at 308, so pretty cool. Well, that's the end of the match. As you can see, the target-to-target -target transition is really good with this. I overswung a little bit on that second portion because I was winded. The rifle absolutely did its job. Um, at this point, after shooting so many different 308 rifles on this market, and this not visually distinguishing itself, but internally and functionally distinguishing itself, has made it an interesting thing in that people don't necessarily notice what they should. And this gun, I'm going to say this, the POF DI Revolution 308 is and will be my go-to 308 rifle on the market. Its weight, its recoil, its accuracy is all astounding. And if you are in the market for something bigger than 5.56 and you want 308, I would highly recommend the DI Revolution. The, uh, the size handles like a standard AR-15, but putting 150 grains of bullet downrange with each shot fired is a thing. And when you couple it with 25 round PMAGs, you aren't losing much of standard capacity either. So, guys, if you're interested, I would go ahead and give this the in-range stamp of approval. I'm a little winded from last stage. This is going to get the in-range stamp of approval. This rifle is phenomenal. I highly recommend it. And this is, again, the DI version. I don't have any experience with their piston versions. POF started as a piston company and went to DI, and they said they now offer both. But I can say this DI gun, under 7 pounds, using 308, is phenomenal. Guys, if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's completely you, the viewer, that keeps InRange alive. We have no funding or monetization from any advertisers or sponsors. It's strictly viewer-supported. If you already are, thank you. Every round fired downrange today of 308 was because of you. If you can't, we get it. Just subscribe to one of our channels. You can find them all on InRange.tv and share with your friends. Thank you very much.